Good morning, kind people of the internet. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of being a touring musician versus being a local freelance musician in one city. So I am 34 years old and I went on my first tour when I was 22 years old and I spent approximately six years um, spending the majority of my time on the road and then um, I'm currently in a, uh, about my sixth year living in Indianapolis, um, just being a freelancer here. So my goal with talking about this is to hopefully be helpful to young musicians who are sort of deciding what they wanna do, if they wanna take a certain job that will take them on the road, or if they want to just work in one specific area or, or what sort of jobs they wanna pursue. Um, hopefully, me sharing my thoughts on this will um, help those people making those decisions. So, I have a list of pros and cons for each, and I just want to go through it. So, if we start on the touring side, the pros, number one is a steady income. So, with the jobs that I was doing, um, let's see, I did, my first two tours were with a show called Blast. My second two were with Hairspray, and then um, I did a chorus line, and then I did the Radio City Christmas show in New York. So with each of those, um, right before I started, we had a contract, you know, and I knew exactly how much I was going to make the entire time. And for most of them, it was like a, just a direct deposit each week. So, you know, there's no question, like um, with Hairspray, uh, the tours were around six months or so each, and I could, actually calculate you know how much I was gonna make the entire time and I could sort of really plan so that's that's definitely the number one pro for touring so number two on the list is travel so by the time I finished my last show uh, I was around 28 years old and I had visited all of the states in the US except for Hawaii and Alaska I had been to um, all the major cities in Canada and I'd been to the Caribbean and to Japan a few times. And I'm sure if I would have stuck with it longer, I could have um, visited many other countries and cities. Um, so that is definitely right up there on the top of the list of pros as well. So next on the list is new close friends as well as musical connections. So um, for example, with the show Hairspray, we're all riding on the bus together every day. So there's about 35 people in the cast and about eight musicians. So for better or worse, you're interacting with these people every single day. So you're gonna figure out a way to get along with each other. And most of the time, um, you'll actually strike up good friendships with people. And of a few people, especially um, people that were working in the orchestra pits with me, that I still keep in touch with today and we're still good friends. And sometimes if they come back through Indianapolis, we'll hang out or if I'm somewhere else and I see them, you know, we can still get together, which is great. And then as far as the musical connections, you know, if, if you're really proactive with it, if you think about each situation, say there's like maybe anywhere from eight to 30 musicians that you're traveling with, um, if you stay in touch with them, they're all gonna go their separate ways and be doing their own projects. Then they may say like, hey, we need a saxophonist or keyboard or whatever it is. Then they'll remember you. And then you have like all these other connections that can give you work as well as like creative things that you wanna be doing. Okay, uh, number four is the improved skill set. So uh, most of the shows I was doing, I was doing a lot of doubling, so I was playing a lot of times uh, flute, clarinet, and saxophone, but um, I did branch off and, and play all of the woodwinds from time to time, so I was doing some piccolo, oboe, and bassoon, and then um, even like alto flute, and then all the different saxophones, soprano, alto, tenor, berry at different times, and then bass clarinet also. Um, so if I'm playing, like when I first started chorus line, my flute chops weren't super strong, but <laughs> that show, forced me to get them really in shape just by playing playing it every day um, really got my chops in shape and then I really had to improve my technique on the instrument just to be able to play the book itself so that was definitely a pro um, in that situation okay the next one is save money so if you're smart about it you can figure out a way not to have any expenses in terms of like living expenses that you have to pay. You know, you, you shouldn't be paying rent or a mortgage or anything when you're on the road. Um, if you can get rid of those uh, places like by subletting or just being out of a contract, then you can just save all of your money. So when you're on the road, you get a salary and then you usually get a per diem too, which will cover most of your food and your housing. So 
if you're smart about it and if you're relatively frugal, you can actually just bank most of that stuff. Doing just a little bit of financial planning ahead of time can really go a long way. So the last pro for the touring side that I came up with was that you get to meet people everywhere. So obviously by like visiting different cities, you get to see um, the cities and experience the architecture and food and everything. But the ability to actually interact with people who especially don't even necessarily speak your language, I think is super powerful. Um, just because it really gives you perspective and gets you out of your mindset and like out of um, sort of a way of thinking that you may have grown up with and maybe where you're from, everybody sort of thinks the same way about a lot of different things. But then you get outside of that bubble, it can really open your eyes to just new ways of thinking, new ways of uh, behaving and interacting. But just to sort of have more of like a global mindset, I think is a, is a really good thing. Okay, so moving on to the con side of touring. This is actually the longest list that I came up with. So number one is lack of musical experiences. So with each show that I was doing, I just had to show up to the pit when the show started, read the book down exactly as it's written, and then do the same thing the next night, and the next night, and the next night. I had zero creative freedom, and really zero opportunity to play in even different instrumentations because we had the same pit orchestra every night. So we're doing the same exact thing. Number two is rough travel schedules. So again, with most of the shows that I was involved with, they were usually doing one-nighter tours, which means you, wherever you are, you get up around 6 a.m. and you get on the bus. Then you're on the bus until 2 p.m. when you roll into the next city, and then you head to the theater at about 3.30 or 4, do a sound check, have dinner, play the show, then you do the same thing the next night. And that's the schedule. So of course, like when you're on the bus, you get a break about every two and a half hours, and then you get an hour for lunch. But that's pretty much the schedule. Of course, there are other tours where you're stopping in cities longer. And a couple of times, I I was able to stop in cities for about a week, and then a, a couple of times about two weeks. And those are those are great. I mean, you have a lot of free time, and you you get to sit in like one hotel for either like seven or 14 days. But most of the time I was doing one-nighters and that's usually what the situation is like if you're a younger, younger musician without much experience. Okay, so number three, limited free time. Okay, so when you're on the bus, of course, you have that time to yourself. Um, you can listen to music or like read books or watch TV or whatever you wanna do, but you're confined to your bus seat. Then you have usually at the most about two hours of downtime when you get to the hotel. And usually this involves either getting some food or uh, showering or exercising. And occasionally like a little bit of practice if there is um, like a conference room in the hotel or if I can somehow sneak over to the theater and it's unlocked and I can get into a dressing room and do a little bit of practicing but otherwise you really don't have much time to yourself. Okay, next is limited practice time. So, you know, I'm somebody who really likes to practice as much as I can or um, as much as I can make time to do for myself. Whereas on the road, you really don't have that time. I mean, you can, if you're really disciplined, I feel like the most you can get is about two hours or maybe like an hour and a half a day if you're on a one nighter tour. You know, if you're doing the bus thing throughout most of the day, you can squeeze in maybe like 30 or 45 minutes um, before sound check. And then if you wanted to skip dinner, just have like a snack, you could actually practice a little bit before the show, which is usually what I ended up doing most days. Okay, next is no creative outlet. So that was the big one for me, I realized you know, it's fun initially, you're around all these new people and you're getting to visit new cities. But after a, a few weeks of that, I was somewhat miserable. Um, and I figured out it was just that the reason I love music and that I got into music was that I have the chance to be creative with it and I can be expressive and make my own things musically. So when you're on the road, you really aren't able to do that. I mean, you can do a little bit of playing, 
with the other musicians if they're like-minded, I guess, in, in musical tastes. But again, you're really on like a time crunch and it's really difficult to make that stuff happen. Okay, next you are away from your friends and family. So of course, now it's, it's a little bit easier um, with like FaceTime and, and just staying in touch online, but um, that can be really hard for a lot of people. Um, I definitely saw a lot of people getting homesick and, and that sort of thing. So you kind of have to be prepared with that and there are times like where you'll have maybe like two days off and you have the freedom to like fly home or fly other places and that's something that I saw a lot of people do. Um, but still, it's it's definitely a challenge. Okay, and the last one is the unhealthy lifestyle. So the worst for me, I think, was just having to sit on the bus. Um, and of course, it's just sitting is not great for you, but just the lack of time to exercise, but you're sitting on the bus, then when you go to the theater, you're sitting, I was sitting in the pit orchestra in a chair. So usually what I ended up doing was right when the bus rolled into the hotel, I would go for a run, either in the hotel gym or like around the hotel. Um, and this actually helped a lot when I was able to get in that pattern. The hard thing is like usually when you get to the hotel, you're pretty exhausted because you've been on the bus since like 6 a.m., but that's, that's the thing. The other side of it too is like, especially when you get into the more rural areas, if you're doing like a lunch stop, a lot of times you'll roll into like a strip mall and it's just like a McDonald's and an Arby's. <laughs> That's it. So you, you eat lunch there and then you get to the hotel and then you're not feeling great. So just trying to like find little ways of staying on top of your health is, is really difficult on the road. All right, we're moving over to the local freelance side. So the pros of being a local freelance musician. Number one, you have virtually unlimited collaborations with other musicians. And especially in a city like Indianapolis, which I guess I would say is like a mid, mid to large size city, um, there are tons of great musicians here. And with not a lot of effort, I feel like I've really been able to do a lot of playing with, in a lot of different styles and different contexts with a lot of different people. Um, this is a, just a short, um, not inclusive list, but just off the top of my head, over the past few years, I've, I've been able to play with people like the Tucker Brothers Group, Kenny Phelps, Steve Ali, Jeremy Allen, Ben Lumsdane, Jay Thomas, Charlie Ballantyne, Cynthia Lane, and all the people that have played in my big band and my small groups as well. Um, and every musical experience has been super fulfilling, um, in part because I'm somewhat picky when I pick my musical experiences now. I guess when I was on the road, I was just forced to um, do this one thing or this one style for like weeks on end. But now I can like really follow my own intuition and choose my projects more carefully, which is really, really great. Okay, number two is I can set my own schedule. So right now, I really love my schedule because it's sort of balanced between doing some teaching, some playing, and then just working on my own projects, like um, composing and then practicing for things, um, which is really great. Um, and that was the thing, when I was on the bus touring, I found myself daydreaming about it. I was just like, oh, I can't wait until I can wake up in my own place, work on my own stuff and not have to ride a bus, you know, just be able to play my instrument, work on music and, and get all these projects rolling that have been in my head for such a long time. And now I've actually been able to do that. Um, number three is the healthy lifestyle. So this is really great also, just to be able to live somewhere where I can like basically jog to a gym or drive there in just a few minutes. Um, or I can easily just go on a jog from where I live um, or go f for a swim somewhere. And it's really easy to go grocery shopping um, that may not sound like a big thing, <laughs> but that quickly became when I was on the road, the number two thing that I looked forward to besides like doing creative things with music was grocery shopping. Oh man, that, it's like, that is the best thing. So I try not to take that for granted now. Okay, next is being connected to a place. This is not really something that I thought too much about when I was on the road. But um, when you're touring around a lot, 
you're definitely connected to like the small group of people that you're with, but you're really just a visitor every time you show up somewhere versus now I feel like there's so many places I can go just like restaurants or see friends or other retail places or just where anywhere in the city. And I do have more of a feeling of belonging, um, which I think is probably a pretty positive feeling for just human beings in, in general. Um, but I, I've definitely uh, appreciated that feeling more just over the past couple of years, I think. Okay, next is freedom. So obviously this can be somewhat of a blessing and a curse. And I, I think I wanna talk a little bit about this topic more specifically in a different video, but being a freelancer, you have to be your own boss versus when I was on the road, you know, I was an employee of whatever touring company I was working for. Um, and they gave you a time breakdown of what time you get on the bus, what time the bus picks you up for sound check, what time the show is, and then the schedule. And you got a schedule for every week so that you knew what was happening. Versus now, you know, I do have time commitments as far as um, being to certain gigs or being to certain schools to teach or having students come here. But it's a lot, there's a lot more give with that where I can say like, no, I don't want to do this particular thing or yes, I do want to do this. And you know, I'm setting my own schedule and I choose if I'm going to stick to it, to it or if I'm going to change it slightly. Um, so I think uh, one big thing with that is just having the self-discipline to follow through with the schedule that you make for yourself. And if you're able to do that, I think that's a huge thing and, and you can really accomplish a lot. Okay, next is artistically fulfilling. So again, this is a huge, huge one for me, but I, I guess I would say I never experienced that while playing shows. I mean, I would do my best to like play the book perfectly. Um, a lot of times that did not happen, especially if I was, if I had like um, tricky things uh, or like really technical things on instruments that I didn't play that great. Um, but even when I did play the book perfectly and I thought maybe like the pit orchestra sounded good or like the singers were doing well, I, I never really felt that musical high um, that I think you can get by doing something that's super fulfilling or if you feel like you're doing something that you're meant to do versus now when I'm playing in different settings, especially if I'm playing in like settings where it's mostly based on improvisation um, or original compositions, um, I think those two things are, are the real driving forces behind um, my own musical voice. So just by getting to sort of um, try to do those those two things has been huge for me. And it's, it's really motivated me in a lot of different ways as well. Whereas on the road, you kind of get in this mindset where it's, you, you feel like you can't, you can't grow musically, but you also can't ever really enjoy each gig from night to night because you know it's going to be the exact same. So it's it's very much like a Groundhog Day situation where it's just you show up, you know it's going to be the same, and there's nothing you can do to change it. So you just have to learn to live with it. So the con side of being a local musician, this is by far the shortest list and not intentionally. I just didn't really come up with much here. So number one is lack of steady income. So this is definitely a hard thing, especially if you are a younger freelancer without a lot of connections um, or without a lot of experience already. It's kind of like, how do you make this happen? Um, and I think there's so much to talk about there that it would be best to save that for another video as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is, is being somewhat diverse, even though I don't really feel like I'm very diverse now, but um, I guess diversifying what I choose to do now. So I'm doing a little bit of part-time teaching at some schools. I do a little bit at home, and then I try to spend the rest of my time gigging or working on my own stuff. Um, so building that all together, you know, it, it adds up 
to where I can support myself. Um, versus on the road, again, you have that like salary situation where you're just getting that direct deposit and you don't really have to worry about that at all. Um, so although it's, it's one of the cons, I guess, uh, for being local, I would actually say if you, if, depending on your mindset, how you look at it, it can be something that really motivates you and drives you to be successful in exactly what you want to do. Um, like if you want to be a full-time lesson teacher and just like teach lessons for like four or five hours a day, you can certainly do that and you can make really great money doing that. Or if you want to focus on um, being like a university teacher, you can definitely make that happen too. But I think it's a little bit more difficult and, and takes a little bit more groundwork versus like if you get a show, basically just sign the contract and you're set for like six months or, or whatever the show is. Okay, so next on the con list is monotony. And this is one um, that was sort of weird for me because like right when I got out of college, I was on the road and I was traveling all over the place on and off for about six years. So, you know, you're constantly hit with all this stimu this new stimuli. So it's like the new people in the cast, new musicians showing up. You're in a new city, you're in a new hotel room. It's like, so there would be times that I would, I would like wake up and before I opened my eyes, I couldn't even like picture what the room would look like. And then even after that, I'd have to think for like 20 seconds or something to even remember what city I was in. Um, that is like, can be a, a weird thing than coming off the road after a while you're just like you're living in the same place a lot of times you'll see the same people every day and you don't realize that all that stimulation you had on the road was really in a, in a lot of ways keeping that situation interesting for you the music certainly wasn't doing it for me but like all the other things kept it interesting to a certain degree versus now um I have to be aware of that. Like if I get too much stuck in like, okay, the video camera stopped automatically. Obviously I'm talking too long, but basically um, it's the idea where it's like, if I'm not aware of that, I'm waking up in the same place, seeing a lot of the same people doing a lot of the same things. And if I, if I'm too strict with my own schedule, then um, I can tell mentally my brain just wants to rebel and it just like needs variety. So as long as I can be aware of that and try to like provide myself variety in different ways, then I seem to be okay. Um, but I realized that being a little bit of an issue after uh, not being on the road for like two or three years, I was kind of like, wait, this is weird. I'm doing what I, what I love, but I don't, it feels weird. Like um, something about it is getting a little monotonous. Um, I guess a lot of the, goes to like the practicing side. So like if I set a routine with playing the saxophone, if I'm doing like long tones, scales, if I know that that's coming every single day and I'm not changing it up a little bit, then my mind is kind of like, no, we don't want to do that anymore. But if I like keep it fresh, then my brain gets like really excited and then I, and then I become even like more motivated to do it. So I think it's more about, um, keeping keeping things fresh in terms of the projects I'm doing, but also how I'm doing them. Like, you know, I've tried a lot of different schedules where I'll say like, yeah, I'm gonna compose from like eight to 11 every morning, or I'm gonna practice from eight to 10. And usually it works out well for like a couple of weeks, but then my body's just like, nope, we're done with that, you know? <laughs> and it's not because I don't love playing or composing. <clears throat> I think it's more about you just have to approach it in different ways and, and include variety into your routine or else um, I think your brain and body will just sort of rebel and, and, and decide that it's not gonna do it. Um, Cause I think just naturally um, you want variation. And if you just sort of figure out how to give that to yourself, then um, it makes things work out better and it helps keep you in the zone in a way. All right, so that has been the pros and cons of touring and being local. Um, I hope some of you found this helpful. I think I talked a little bit more than I meant to, but I, 
I think I still hit all of the main bullet points that I was thinking of. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.